Switch here. Alright, let me see if I can get this set up here. I want to make sure that it's all set up for you correctly. Correctly. <laughs> All right, good morning. It's Sunday morning where I am. I am your host, Blockhead, because I'm a blockhead. I have a square head. Hey, hope everybody's doing all right, whether you're watching this live or whether you're going to watch this later, okay? Hey, check it out. Big win for Bama yesterday, right? Excited about that. I don't know if anybody had a chance to watch any of the college football games. I only got the chance to watch the one. Alabama wins over Texas A&M. So that was pretty cool. Hey, check it out. This is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to do simple meal prep. Very simple meal prep. Like bare bones basics. Nothing fancy. So if you already have experience with meal prep, it's probably not going to be your thing. I don't know if you want to just stick around and chat with me. Um, but if you've never meal prepped before, um, might learn something. So we're going to do chicken, we're going to do broccoli, and then I'm going to just show you like the sweet potatoes that I would have on the side with that. We're also going to talk a little bit about fitness and just a few easy tips. I've got five easy tips that if you've never started on fitness, if you haven't gotten up off the couch in months, years, whatever, five tips to keep in mind. And that's gonna make it a lot easier, right? It's gonna make your life a lot easier. So, I want you to know that wherever you are, wherever, wherever, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're special, you're unique, there's only one of you, just like there's only one of me, all right? Hey, today, Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Go Jags, do ball till we die, what? All right, I don't know. Is there an official hand sign for that? You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. Check it out. First of all, I need to prep a few things for the stream I'm doing later on today. I'm doing a stream at 6 p.m. Central Time for making Spam Musubi. So it's delightful. If you've never had it, it's quite a treat. If you, if you like Spam a little bit, if you like that sweet and salty taste, if you like sushi a little bit, um, Spam Musubi is awesome. Come back later on and join me for that 6 p.m. Central Time right here on I'm a Blockhead. Okay, so let's get that stuff prepped. I got some rice I need to go ahead and get soaking and I'm gonna go ahead and make um, the sauce. Well, uh, you know what? Nah, we'll save the sauce. We'll get the rice soaking and then we'll get to our meal prep, and then we'll get to our fitness tips. This stream is gonna be about an hour or so long, okay? So let me grab some rice so I can get it soaking. Let me grab some rice so I can get it soaking. All right, now. I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. Let's get some rice. Rice is also very good for meal prep, but I'm not doing rice this coming week. I'm doing sweet potatoes as my carb. Um, but uh, obviously I am gonna treat myself to a piece of Spam Musubi after I make it. So let's get this rice soaking. I'll tell you what I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need one and a half cups of rice for that Spam Musubi. So you always wanna pre-soak your rice. So I'm gonna pretty much soak that all day and then get it set up. Let's see what kind of containers I have to put this rice in. Here's a bowl. Oh, here's a container. Here's a container. A container of rice will make you feel so nice. rice a -roni. <laughs> I don't think that was actually their uh, their thing was that they were the San Francisco treat. That can be your that can be your North Florida treat. But I say a cup and a half, right? Let's do it. There we 
There's a cup. And I think, yep, cup and a half. Sometimes when you make something like uh, like the Spam Musubi that I'm going to make later, you end up with a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra rice. That's okay though. That's okay. We'll find a way to use it. Put it to good use. Let me get this rice sealed and put it back in the cupboard. This is my rice sealing face. Yes, I think that's sealed. That's all sealed up, huh? All right, so you see, got your rice. We're just gonna soak it in just regular water. Gonna fill it until it covers the rice. Covers the rice and it looks so nice. And I'm just gonna put that in the fridge. It needs to soak for at least four hours. This is probably gonna be soaking for a little bit longer. And I'll probably, will go ahead and get it boiled and cool down before the video tonight because I don't want to wait for it to cool down on the video. I want to have some cooled rice ready for y'all tonight to make Spam Musubi. Pop that right down there. Let's get our oven preheated to cook these chicken breasts. We're going to do 350 degrees. All right, we got our oven on for 350 degrees. Today's meal prep, like I say, just chicken, broccoli, sweet potatoes, bare basics, nothing fancy about today, all right? If you wanna get started doing your own meal prep at home, and I will and I will confess to you, I usually do not do my own meal prep. I usually order out from this restaurant that we have in town, but I decided this week that I'm gonna meal prep. So, do yourself a favor. Go on to your favorite website or visit your favorite store and get yourself some meal prep containers. They look like this. Some of them have the uh, single compartment like I like to do. I don't mind if my food's all touching, unlike when I was six years old. But if you want separate compartments, hey, they make those too, just for you. Got some lids to go with it. I'm gonna be looking at doing between 10 and 12 meals, depending on how much chicken I can fit at one time. So all I'm gonna be cooking today is the chicken, just bare basics, and the broccoli. And the broccoli, I'm gonna do it in the microwave. I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. We're gonna microwave this broccoli. I'm gonna season it up. Let me show you sweet potatoes, let me show you. So this is what you wanna do if you want sweet potatoes, the super, super easy way. And I feel a sneeze coming on. If you want, you know what I forgot? Oh man. Okay, if you want super, super easy sweet potatoes, you go to the store and you get these, they're all saran wrapped up, right? These microwave sweet potatoes. You pop one in the microwave. Um, you can either eat a whole one with your meals, which is about, this is about eight ounces. A half of one is about four ounces. So calorie count, if you're looking at a whole sweet potato, it's around 250, 260 calories, right, for the whole thing. A half of one, you're looking to buy half of that, right? 120, 125 calories. Give or take, you know, sweet potatoes aren't, they all don't come in exactly the same size, right? These come out the ground in different sizes, but they're all approximately eight ounces. Um, so, if you want super easy meal prep, you cook up something like your vegetable, broccoli, and your chicken, protein, and then you got your little carb here, and this is just going to the microwave. If you want to get fancy, you can Google up some recipes for roasted sweet potatoes or whatever. I will tell you this about sweet potatoes. Of all the different carbs and starches you can use, in my experience, sweet potatoes do not keep very well in the refrigerator, okay? They start, they just take on like a weird flavor and they start getting super mushy. So that's why I prefer, if I'm gonna do sweet potatoes for the week, I prefer to just microwave them as I go. Like for instance, I'll microwave one of these for lunch, I'll eat half of it with lunch and half of it with dinner. 
You can, if you want, make a variety of meal prep stuff for the week, if you would like to. I am gonna do bare basics this week. Um, I'm gonna do just the same meals all the way across. Uh, I do have a few treats planned for myself during the week. Um, I prefer to work in like a treat here and then something special there rather than to do one specific huge cheat day. Um, those big cheat days are very, very uh, rare for me these days. So, first of all, let me, let me tell you all a little bit about even like the concept of meal prep, right? When you're prepping a meal, you're thinking about what? Macros and stuff. And that's almost a whole nother discussion, how to figure out what your macro needs are gonna be. But in general, human beings, you're gonna need protein, lean protein. You're gonna need a carb, and you're gonna wanna have a veggie in there, and that's the basics. You're gonna pick a protein, a carb, and a veggie. Maybe your protein is fish. Maybe your veggie is Brussels sprouts. Maybe your carb is rice, or quinoa, or sweet potato, or even regular potatoes, you can count. Whatever that is, that's the basic idea to meal prep. And you're gonna Google up whatever recipes you want and that's what you're gonna cook for the week. So that's the idea. I just got my hands washed. I realized that I didn't wash my hands at the beginning of the stream. So anyway, check this out. While this uh, oven is preheating over here. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about where I'm at right now in my fitness plan, my fitness walk. Right, we all have our different fitness adventures. Maybe your fitness adventure is that you're super jacked and everything. Maybe your fitness adventure is that you haven't got up on the couch. Maybe you're into CrossFit, maybe you're into MMA, maybe you do the Zumba, whatever it is, right? We all have different, different walks in life. So me, about 10 years ago, I got really serious about running marathons. I ran four or five marathons and then a handful of half marathons. And I did that for a while, For this is over the course of several years. And then about five years ago, I got more, much more interested in lifting weights. And so what I did for me personally is I went to that beachbody.com site and I picked up this DVD set, this workout program called Body Beast. And I had me a little bench in my room and I had the dumbbells and stuff and basically the instructor on the DVDs kind of taught me like the basics of weightlifting and diet and nutrition. And that's how I got started lifting weights. And so over the next several years, you know, I've slowly added a little bit of muscle mass to my frame. Um, I certainly can tell a huge difference when I look back at those pictures five years ago before I started doing this. I think I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I am happy. And I think that's the key really, you know? You should always have like two, two frames of mind, right? One, I have an idea of where I kind of want to go, right, and what I'm working towards. And two, you got to be happy with what you already got, right? Look at me, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm standing here. Hashtag blessed, if you will. So you ain't got to feel bad. Wherever you're at in, in your, your fitness journey, your health journey or whatever, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be an added stress or added anxiety. Everyone has all these things, all these obligations going on in their lives. And fitness and health and exercising and watching what you eat should be fun. It should not be an added stressor. Okay. So a little bit later, I'm gonna get into my tips on you know, how to make it fun. How, what kind of mindset do you need to do this? To get into fitness, to make it fun, okay? Because that's the thing. Everything, my, my whole life is built around that paradigm. If, if I'm not having a good time, something's wrong. Something's wrong, it don't matter, you know? Remember that, remember that movie Mary Poppins? She made everything, even cleaning your room, every chore needs to be a game. It needs to have an element of fun to it. You have to find your own way as to how to make it fun, right? Okay, so where I'm at right now, I started doing this program. Jeremy Ethier, or Ethier, how do you say that dude's name? He has this program called Built With Science. 
and I started it six weeks ago and I'm doing the intermediate shred program so the idea is I started at 179 not a not a huge amount of see not a huge amount of muscle mass like I'm not but it, but decent decent like I have something to go with so the idea is we're gonna slowly work our way down strip away some of the fat and we're gonna see what happens we're just gonna see what it looks like you know right now I'm like dad bod aesthetic which I'm cool with dad bods are the end thing right now you know dad bods are like hot pop it hashtag dad bod but I just want to see I want to see what I can do so started about six weeks ago at 179 pounds I'm down to 172 now that's a great rate of weight loss for somebody my size that's a that's perfect it's what you want to hit a little bit more than a pound a week is is what I'm doing averaging out at so I think that is outstanding let me put this sweet potato back in the fridge and let me get our chicken that we're gonna get ready to go you ready you ready to go Hey, friendly disclaimer, I'm not a doctor and not a personal trainer. I would love to be a personal trainer someday. That's one of my big, big goals, I'm thinking. I'm like, I'd love to be a personal trainer. I'd love to get to the point to where I'm, you know, streaming on Twitch and doing that, but I'm not. So, friendly disclaimer, before you start any fitness journey, before you start any new diet, Check with your doctor. Check with the licensed nutritionist, right? I'm just a friendly streamer. I'm a blockhead. You gonna take fitness advice from a blockhead? Hey, you do you, you know what I'm saying? All right. We got our big bag of frozen chicken breasts. I usually like to cook not frozen. But when I went to the grocery store, check this out. They had like no good looking chicken breasts over in that section the like not frozen section the cold section but not frozen section so I was like you know what I'll just grab a bag of frozen chicken breasts it ain't no thing you just gotta cook them for a little bit longer um, maybe it's in my head I tend to think that they when they're cooked they tend to turn out like a little bit tougher than the ones that aren't have never been frozen but the ones that I think have never been frozen that are sitting there in the cooler have probably been frozen at some point anyway so it's probably just a it's probably just a mental thing in my head so I'm gonna get a baking pan out when you cook frozen chicken breast in the oven it's gonna create a lot of like water from the ice melting and stuff so I actually like to use the baking pan with the walls on it I'm gonna show you I thought I was gonna show you where did my baking pan go? Like, you see how it's got the walls on the sides? I like the water going everywhere. So let's see how many I can fit in here. Remember, I'm trying to do about 10 meals this week. All right, 10 basic meals. And the oven's ready. That's perfect timing. So I got one, two, three, four. I can probably fit five, five on here. It looks like there is about nine chicken breasts in total in this bag. And I can fit about five of them in here comfortably. I'm almost thinking maybe I should just use the long baking sheet anyway. Because <laughs> I know I could fit more chicken breasts on it. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Hold up. Yep. I'm going to use the thin one. All right, fine. I'm going to use the thin one because... I know I can get more chicken breasts on here. So I like to put aluminum foil on mine. So let me grab some foil. I promise I won't be long. I'm just going right over here. All right. Can y'all wait? All right. Got the aluminum foil. Bam. That's how you do it. Rip that aluminum foil off. Y'all gonna watch the football games later? 
I'm from Florida, so I'm a, I'm a Jaguars fan. You know, initially I thought the Jags, I thought we were going to have an amazing season. <sighs> we had a few bumps and bruises along the way. We do have the Bengals today, which should be good for us. Sorry, Cincinnati fans. Should be good for the Jags. But after, they, after the Jags lost to the Dolphins, I don't know. It could be anything. All right, I was right. So I was able to fit way more chicken breast on this bad boy. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's probably going to do... I mean, that'll do at least seven meals. I'll probably get eight meals out of this with this chicken. After the chicken's cooked, I use a scale. And I will show you all that when I get to it. I'll use a scale and I'll try to weigh out about eight ounces of chicken in each meal. All right. Oh, things are making noise. Hey, this chicken's gonna go in the oven. It's gonna go in for 25 minutes. Then at the 25 minute mark, we're gonna season it. We're gonna flip it over. We're gonna season the other side and we're gonna stick it back in the oven for another probably 15 minutes or so. So total cooking time on this chicken, frozen, should be about 40 minutes at 350 degrees in the oven. All right, so here they go. Going in the oven. And the reason why I'm so excited about that is because that's gonna give me some time to talk to y'all about fitness stuff, health goals. I am washing my hands again. Oh, can you, we need to, I need to look up a cool, 30 minute song that I can sing, 30 second, not 30 minutes, holy moly. A 30 second song that I could sing to y'all every time I wash my hands, something funny. You know what I mean? Like a boy band song or something. Or like a uh, <laughs> red solo cup maybe, you know. I know that's not a boy band song, but still all the same. So while the chicken's cooking, put this timer on. Put our timer on and we'll talk about some stuff and when it's cooking the second time is when we're gonna do our broccoli remember today is about easy 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 meal prep this is not fancy this is mostly an excuse to have a conversation about the beginning beginning of the week about what we're gonna do this week and our fitness goals our fitness plans right so it's mostly what this is so if you already are used to meal prep and stuff like that probably not gonna get a whole lot out of this if you've never meal prep before you may see some things or it may inspire you to start doing your own meal prep at home and if you don't that's okay too this isn't, it's no pressure this stream you know I've said a million times this stream is never any pressure to do anything you don't want to do right so check it out remember I'm not a doctor not a personal trainer. I hope to be someday. But if you want some advice from a blockhead, I got some tips for y'all about ways to set your mind, to set your attitude about fitness. My number one tip is, this is for people who maybe you've never exercised, maybe you've never started watching what you eat, right? You're a total newbie, right? Start small. A lot of people, what they do is they buy these books, they buy these programs, you know, they set a, a New Year's resolution in their head and they just go all out. Everything all at once is what they do. They're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out for an hour and a half every day and I'm going to cut everything out of my diet. No, 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 no. Tell you what, I used to watch that show biggest loser man that show is the biggest loser i used to hate on that show how they take these people who need to slowly incorporate fitness concepts into their life they take these people and they decide they're going to put them through the most hellish punishing workouts ever and i'm like what are you doing terrible so my advice is start small right a little bit at a time okay so 
an example of what that might look like is you might say, you know what? I'm going to exercise specifically pick the exercise you're going to do. Are you going to go walking? Are you going to Zumba? Are you going to get on the Google and the YouTubes and look up an exercise video? I'm going to exercise three times this week for 30 minutes. That's one thing, right? That's one thing. Two, I am going to take all my medications and a multivitamin. You know what I'm saying? So if you're one of those people who you're on medications for whatever reason and you commonly forget or skip them, maybe this can be your number two. I'm going to take my medicine every day and I'm going to take a vitamin every day. Whatever, right? That's easy. Number three, I'm going to cut out soda. I'm going to stop drinking soda. No more soda. No more, no more regular soda. No more diet soda. I mean, I don't know. You could drink diet soda. It's, it just depends, you know. You find people that are like, it's fine. You find people that don't, whatever. I'm saying as an example, you could be like, I'm not drinking no more soda. No more sodas. But just be careful, right? Don't treat yourself. Don't don't cheat. Don't cheat yourself, right? Don't be like, I'm going to cut out soda, but energy drinks are okay right now. That's still a carbonated beverage. You know what you're trying to do. You know, stick to that water. Me personally, I like to start the day with a little bit of coffee with a little bit of sweetener in it. And then for the rest of the day, I just drink water. You know, if I had my if I had my big old jug over here, I'll show you. I just get the gallon jug and I just drink water all day. Damn thing. Hey, speaking of coffee, I need something right now. Mm -mm. 17 minutes left. For today's seasoning, I have mesquite. Grillmates mesquite seasoning. It's like a little barbecue seasoning. You can use whatever kind of seasoning you like. Sometimes I like to use a little. They make these bar. They make this barbecue sauce. G Hughes makes a sugar-free barbecue sauce in many different flavors that is very tasty. Let's check that out. All right, y'all get what I'm saying when I say start small. Start small. You ain't got it. You don't have to go from, you know, couch potato to like shredded athlete overnight. It's all about you, you know? Be a little bit better than you were last week. Your only competition is yourself. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at the Instagram. Your competition is you. Exercise three times a week. Drink the water. Take your medicine. Cut soda out of your diet. That's what I'm saying. It's easy. Start small. Number two is enjoy this process. You have so many other things going on in your life. So many obligations. So many stresses. Right? Things that just bring you down. Exercise and diet plan and stuff. It should not be one of them. This should add joy to your life. This is going to add dimension to your life. This is going to... Hopefully, literally, add years to your life. Happy years. So enjoy this process, okay? Gotta have fun. Pick a form of exercise that you enjoy. If you enjoy getting outside to walk, run, bike. If you like doing Zumba in your living room, you know? If you wanna get a video game where it's physical, you're getting up and you're playing, they got the ring thing now. I've seen the, the ring on the Switch. You know, make it enjoyable. This is supposed to be fun, right? You know, when you're counting calories and stuff, look at it like a game. Look at it like a video game. Hey, I've got this many calories to spend every day, you know, whatever that, that number is. And you can't go over it. You can't bust it, all right? Except for once, once in a while. Once in a while, have that second glass of wine. You know what I'm saying? You'll know when the time is right. I trust you. You'll know. Number three. Enlist a wingman or a wing woman, right? Bah! There's the wing, bah! right? Enlist a wingman, enlist a friend, basically. Get a friend um, if you can. One thing that is counterintuitive, actually, that works for me, you gotta find your own way, okay? I don't think when you initially start fitness plans that you should go out of your way to tell everybody. 
I don't think you should tell all your friends and family and everybody else, hey, I'm on this new diet, blah, blah. This took some time for me to learn myself. I would always make this mistake. I would go on a new plan, a new diet, and I would just start telling, hey, I'm on this new plan, I'm on, I'll do this. This time, I have waited to acknowledge it until I'm about six weeks in, and it's sticking. Six weeks, that's a pretty long time to stick to something, and I can sense it in myself that I'm gonna stick to this for the rest of the six weeks, for the rest of this year, sticking to it next year until I get to where I wanna be in this particular phase. You know, and what I mean by that is I started at 179. I have a goal weight that, you know, I use the program to calculate where I need to get to before I maybe we might see an ab or two. You know what I'm saying, man? Peek and say hello. We don't know. I don't know yet, but I'm very curious. So that's that's what I mean by that. Don't don't go out of your way to tell everybody. Maybe tell a few people. And the friend, this person, could be a family member, could be a friend. This is going to be your one person. Hey, I'm doing this. Sometimes you can inspire people to um, do it with you, but it's not ob obligation. You just need somebody in your life that is motivating and inspiring to just kind of check up on you and see how you're doing. Because there's going to be times when you're going to be struggling and you're going to want to tell somebody and you're either going to go on social media and put it out there. And the thing, the crazy thing about life, the crazy thing about life is that you absolutely do have you have people in your life right now friends or family or whatever who they either secretly or not so secretly they hate on your success for some reason it's wild like they do not want you to succeed that's why I say do not go out of your way to tell every last person about what you're trying to do with your life keep it a secret except for the wingman or wing woman. 12 minutes on this chicken till it gets the seasoning. Hey, tip number four. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Good morning, taco maniac. Hey, you never know. Thanks for stopping in. Number four, when it comes to exercise, doing something, anything, is better than nothing. So what I say is, you start off your week, right? You got plan A in your head. You're like, hey, I'm gonna hit the gym. I'm gonna go for a run. Sometimes life happens, man, you know? Sometimes you get to the gym, forget your headphones, whatever the case is. So the idea is that if your plan A gets interrupted, go to plan B. You plan to go outside and it's raining or whatever, and now you gotta stay inside. Maybe you don't like running in the rain. Maybe it's lightning. Maybe a tornado is coming, right? You gotta have a plan B. You gotta have something in your mind you're gonna do instead. Maybe you knock out push-ups and sit-ups and burpees in your living room. Maybe you turn on the YouTube and you look for a quick workout video. Whatever works for you. But don't give up just because the day's not shaping up. Maybe you couldn't get to the gym to do your hour-long workout. That doesn't mean you can't bust out a few push-ups and sit-ups here and there, all right? That can be plan B. Hey, I'm just gonna do 10 minutes of this, just 10 minutes, right? Don't think just because you can't hit an hour, just because you can't hit your, your plan A workout that you can't do anything. Something is better than nothing. And my number five tip for today is, uh, <laughs> I had to look twice. <laughs> it better be nice. Be patient. Be patient with yourself, right? You, you owe it to yourself to be kind to yourself, gentle to yourself, because in this world, ain't nobody going to do that for you, all right? You owe it to yourself to be patient. So if you start implementing things like exercise, eating right, cutting out the bad stuff, if you start implementing that stuff in your life, Sometimes it takes time to see change, man. Sometimes the number on the scale don't move that much, you know? So be patient, you know? You should, hopefully, you should try to, you should try to do the process for the process. You should already be having fun, right? Like the earlier tip. 
So don't focus so much on the results, okay? Are you feeling good? Are you having a good time? Honestly, that just doesn't apply to fitness. You know, that's, that's a life thing, you know? Stuck somewhere. Gotta, have, gotta make life fun. Man, what are we on this earth for? What are we on this planet for? If not to have fun, right? And to laugh and joke around and dance. I'm gonna put this aluminum foil up and I'm gonna be right back. Think about that. Don't be a sour grape all the time, you know what I mean? We're here to have some fun. So be patient with yourself. That's my five fitness tips. If you want to get started, if you want my opinion, if you want the opinion of a blockhead that roots for Alabama, if that's you, hey, we got eight minutes left on this chicken. Let me tell you something I saw, a couple of things I saw in uh, yesterday's game, right? Alabama was playing Texas A&M. First of all, there was this amazing reception. Jalen Waddle pulled it out of whatever. And then this man turned on the afterburner. This, this dude runs like Sonic the Hedgehog. I was like, what? They replayed that over and over and over again. I was like, man. It was like, he was already going like lightning fast. And then he like turned it up to another level. It was wild. It was absolutely wild. And then the other thing I saw, it's kind of like the flip side of that. They called a pass interference on Texas A&M defender. And I, they showed that clip over and I was like, I love, I'm a Bama fan, right? But that was not pass interference. The defender, wish I could remember the name, defender, he was up on him, but he was definitely playing the ball. He was looking at the ball. He was on his guy. He didn't grab for anything. He didn't do anything. They were, they were like glued together. Don't get me wrong. They were like glued together. But the defender was playing the ball and he did not do anything that looked like it warranted pass interference. So I, I did not think that was a great call, but nevertheless, Alabama went on to win the game. And I don't think that particular call made any difference in the game yesterday. But don't you ever do that? You guys ever watch football and you're like, what is this? Why did they call that? That's not. And then the commentators, sometimes they try to like justify it. They're like, oh, that's the, you know, reverse Uno skip you rule or whatever. And I'm like, y'all are just making stuff up as you go along. I'm serious. I've been watching football now for so many years. Every single year I hear some new rule that I'm like, I've never heard of this before ever. Say, so they, they literally made this up for this game. We got six minutes on these chicken breasts. I'm gonna go ahead and get a bowl and put my broccoli in there. Yeah, you know what it's up. Y'all like broccoli? I like broccoli too. It smells when you microwave it though. Hey, if you work in an office, don't ever choose fish as your protein unless you're gonna eat that cold. Don't be microwaving fish in the office. Everybody knows that. You'll be voted off the island. Let me get a bowl for this broccoli. Yo, 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 where is my bowl? Got a bowl right here. Got a bowl. There's our, there's our broccoli bowl. It's already green. I guess, kind of a blue green, sea green. We got our big giant bag of broccoli. What do you think the ingredients are? I wonder if there's an ingredient list and it just says, oh yeah, there is, let's pick this out. Ingredients, broccoli. You know, see that? It literally does say on this bag, the ingredients are just broccoli. Sometimes when you buy stuff and it's basic like this, it'll say like broccoli, salt, like that. But this is, this is just broccoli. This, this came from the finest broccoli farmers in the world, if you don't know. 
I should look that up. I bet there is a video on broccoli farming and how they farm broccoli. I wonder if it's hard. I wonder if it's complicated to farm broccoli. So I know that I probably can make eight meals out of the amount of chicken I stuck in the oven. So in my head, I'm trying to picture. How much broccoli I'm gonna need. The thing about broccoli is, you're talking about plain broccoli here. You ain't gotta worry about overdoing it. You don't have to sit there and be like, Worry about the calories and the macros and your protein and in your carb. The veggie, it's almost as good as free. Don't even worry about that. You're, you're, you're never going to not get shredded from eating, you know, too many calories of broccoli or whatever. I mean, yeah, theoretically a calorie is a calorie, but I'm telling you, that's not going to happen. You're not going to, you're not going to put a little too many florets of broccoli and it's gonna ruin your diet for the week so don't I don't measure out broccoli I just like eyeball it I just eyeball it that is a song I got a vibe on it I just eyeball it I'm gonna look that up later what is that song it's the only part of it I can remember Hey, uh, got your little trees of broccoli right here. So they're going to be ready to go in a minute. Two minutes left on the chicken's first round. And then remember, I say, I'm going to pull them out, give them a little seasoning on one side, flip them, season the other side. They're going to go back in for 15 minutes. I'll do the broccoli. We'll chat a little bit more about this whole fitness life. Fit fam, fit squad, whatever. Whatever crazy corny hashtags that you guys can think of, you know, mustache fitness, right? I do work out, if you guys don't know, I do work out my mustache twice a week. I do it with my abs. I just, you never seen somebody work? I'm, I'm not going to show you on this, this time how to uh, work out a mustache, but uh, get that, get that mustache growth. Broccoli, if you want to grow... If you want to grow a big bushy mustache, you got to eat your broccoli, kids. All right. I know you grow up not liking broccoli. You have to get over it. If you ever want a, uh, uh, a big, big mustache. Even the ladies. The ladies, you eat enough broccoli, you're going to grow a big old mustache like this. You tell the dudes in your life, just deal with it. Deal with it. I am a lady with a mustache. Do you have a problem with that? Just tell them. Just tell them. You probably grow a better mustache than they do. Don't be scared of them. Don't be scared of them boys. Don't be scared of them boys. I don't know what voice that was supposed to be. All right. It says I have a minute left on the chicken. I think that's close enough. Let me throw this stuff away. Can y'all hear that? Can y'all even hear that music? I'm gonna watch this later and see if the volume was up high enough. So I'm gonna feel, well, I'm not gonna feel stupid. I'm just gonna feel bad, I guess, a little bit. But I'm dancing to the music, but y'all can't hear it. We ought to do a stream where we just do like a dance party. And we just play like background music. Um, I dance exactly like Drake in Hotline Bling. And that was like, Drake, Drake did people like me, he did us right. You know, he represented all the people that just have the really lame dance moves and stuff. And I mean, I, I love Drake. Thank you for doing that, Drake. Drake, if you're watching this stream or this video one day, I love you, man. You really helped, you really boosted my confidence. I saw another grown ass man dancing like that and I was like, that's how I dance. Hey, the chicken tray. All right, we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna get a little seasoning. Oh, yes. Yes, can y'all see? There we go. That's kind of what it, um, 
You really can't see. That's all right. Someday, yeah, our season right here. Someday when I grow up, someday when I grow up, I'm gonna have multiple cameras in the kitchen. I watched this streamer last night, man. She was cooking up some jalapeno poppers, some spinach, and artichoke dip. She had the best personality. She had the best microphone. She had the best camera angles. And I was like, man, if I wasn't having such a good time watching this, I would be bitterly jealous. She was a sweetheart though. I had a great time. That's what I love about this. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna get eight meals out of this. This chicken is shrinking up. So let's sprinkle a little bit more stuff. The smaller pieces are actually gonna be done. They're probably almost done. So we're gonna put the overall timer in for um, 15 minutes, but in just like a, a minute or two, I'm gonna check these smaller pieces. Um, I don't like to overcook my chicken when I do meal prep, but I do overcook it often, unfortunately. meal prep like this unless you get really 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 good or hit on a great recipe you pretty much do have to sacrifice some of the um, some of the flavor and texture and stuff that you would get if you were just like if I was just sitting down and I was just cooking a meal for two with me and my husband you know I would put a lot of time and love into it you know, and I would really want to make sure that it tasted the very best. Like I would, I would not do chicken like this, first of all. But when I'm meal prepping, I'm just trying to get it done. Get in and get out and get on with my day. But you might be different. You might want to put a lot of time and energy into your meal prep, you know. Um, I don't, I don't, which is why most weeks I order it. I order my meal prep most weeks. This broccoli is gonna go in the microwave for five minutes. Stir it up another five minutes and we'll be done with the broccoli. I have a meat thermometer. There are ways you can Google online to test if meat is done to the desired doneness pressing your thumb on it and stuff like that. But, I just use a meat thermometer, right? Chicken, poultry, I believe is 165. It is 165. So you wanna, you wanna put the meat thermometer, and you wanna stick this jab it into the middle, the thickest part of the meat you're testing. The middle part. And that's what you wanna see if it's 165. So these little tiny pieces, which look like they're almost done, I'm gonna see if they're done. I got my, my cutting board ready to go with the chicken. I'm gonna put that right here. Right over the top of the sink is where it goes. It's the best place for it, really. So I'll put that right there, and then I'm gonna test these little, turn this on, test my little chicken pieces. They do look done. See if we're good. So, my meat thermometer has died. It has died. And it will not come on. 
It actually does have a thing where you can replace the battery on it. It's probably a watch battery. So I might do that, or I might just get a new ether. Anyway, with chicken, there is another way you can tell too, and that is if you poke it and the juices run clear, then you are probably in the clear. But I still, I, I like to check my meat if I have the option. I like to check it with a meat thermometer. So with chicken, we're gonna go with the clear juices. We're gonna let those two pieces, those two tiny pieces cook for a little bit longer and then they're gonna be done. Chicken, when the chicken comes out of the oven, ideally you wanna let it rest for just a bit and then you wanna cut it into either slices or chunks, however you prefer. Then I'm gonna show you how we weigh it and then we put it in our meal prep container. So I'm gonna make, gonna make one meal with y'all um, show you how that looks. Bam, bam, bam. Oh man, it's gonna be a good. I think it's gonna be a good week, don't y'all? You know, we're into October, we're into Halloween. I have a. Shh, can I tell y'all a secret? Keep it a secret. I have a project that I'm trying to get lined up towards the end of this month. And because of the nature of the project, I'm trying to lose a few more LBs before I get there. Um, you know, it'll make me feel really good if I, if I can lose two or three more pounds in those two or three more weeks before we get there. I'm gonna feel pretty good. It is related to Halloween. I hope it doesn't fall through and I hope that I can also find a way to show y'all the finished result if I get it if I get it done um, this collab this this project collaboration with another very talented person in my life dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna try to stop the microwave before it actually goes off I should look and see if there's a way to have like silent mode on this microwave for when I'm cooking and baking. That's another thing too, when I'm baking, I also put a lot of like love and energy into what I'm baking. And I'm a lot more, of all the things that I do, I really care the least about how my meal prep tastes and turns out. Um, which is funny because I'm eating it all week. But for me, it's just the meal prep food I don't know, I can't explain the mindset. It's just a functional thing. I need to get this food in to get my macros, to feel my workouts a certain way, to hopefully make the fat go away, but as much as the muscle stay as possible. So that's like the mindset. So like, I don't really put a lot of like, love and effort into it. I'm like, here you go, microwave this broccoli and put some seasoning on it, we're good. So we stirred up the broccoli. It needs another five minutes in the microwave. Um, but when I cook, like if I'm gonna cook a, a casserole, if I'm gonna cook a, um, you know, a lasagna or whatever, if I'm gonna cook spam musubi like I'm gonna do this evening, 6 p.m. Central Time, check it out. Yeah, I put more like love and effort and I'm more sensitive to how it turns out. I can be like, ooh, this didn't turn out so good. I'll be like, man, this is banging. You ever do that? You ever make something and you just go, dude, this is banging. You got to try this. This is freaking amazing. I do that sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. And then when I bake. Baking's my favorite. I love baking desserts for others. Um... I usually do, I always do my thing where I'll, I'll try a piece, you know, and then I try to give the rest away to my husband, my son, my workplace, whoever will have a piece. You can have a piece. Seven minutes on the chicken, and then the chicken's gonna be done. Four minutes on the broccoli. I'm gonna put together one meal for y'all just so y'all can see how it looks, how it go about my day. Thank you so much for stopping in, whether you're live on the stream or whether you're gonna check this out later. I really appreciate it. Y'all coming in and checking out some 
some simple, simple, almost, dare I say it, boring meal prep. That's okay. That's okay. If, you know, I'm telling you one of the great things about getting, getting older is that you just, you just don't care as much about other people's opinions at all. Like, if people are delighted, then great. If people are vibing and having a good time, great. If, if, you know, if they have negative opinions, you really, it just doesn't really bother you anymore. You're like, I don't care. It's whatever, man. You do you, bro. You do you, sis. That ain't no thing. So, I am, I don't feel obligated to entertain anybody or do anything like that. You know what I mean? I just, I'm here vibing. I'm having a great time. Hopefully y'all are having a great time. Y'all ready to kick this week off in style. We got some NFL football on later today. I need to look up who's playing Monday night. Anybody know who's playing Monday night? I don't know. I might actually get a chance to watch it tomorrow night, I think. We got a week full of not just football, but great television coming up. We got Big Brother coming on this week. We got the Masked Singer coming on this week. It's gonna be it's gonna be good, y'all. I got this. Uh, I know what my stream for tomorrow is gonna be. I got time. Tomorrow the stream, 9 a.m. Central Time, Monday. If you don't know, tomorrow the stream is gonna be Mimosas and a magazine. You know what I'm saying? Monday. So you got the three M's. Monday, Mimosa, magazine. It's gonna be brunch, 9 a.m. So, come join me. That's one of my treats for the week that I give myself. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. If you decide you're going to watch what you eat, you decide you're going to work out, you're going to kill it, it's not all dreary, man. I'm going to have some mimosas first thing tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. with y'all. So, I'm going to have my mimosas. Man, that's a fun word to say. Mimosa. And then we're gonna go through we're gonna go through the latest hot guys with this magazine I bought yesterday, the In Touch magazine. So you wanna come and join me tomorrow for a little brunch, a little mimosas in the morning, 9 a.m. Central Time. Broccoli's got a minute, chicken's got four. We're almost done today, people. That was great, right? We got in, we get our meal prep done, and we get out, we get on with our day. We're ready to go ready to rock and roll. I love rock and roll. Somebody real famous once said that. She was like, I love rock and roll. Put another dollar in the jukebox, baby. Y'all remember that song? Y'all ain't old enough to know that song. Y'all ain't old enough. I know, I know who's on this website. Y'all don't know that song. About to learn. Oh man, what a great day. It's fall, October. Mm. What are y'all gonna do for Halloween? What are we all gonna do? We're all stuck indoors. I had to have a virtual. Let me stop this before it buzzes, before it dings. We ought to have a virtual Halloween party. Halloween dance party. That's you know that's what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna plan that Saturday night on Twitch. The only problem is there's a lot of good streamers that stream in the evening. That's why I'm glad I stream in the mornings. There's a lot of good streamers in the evenings, and I want to watch them just as much as y'all do. So I don't I don't know if I want to get on and do my own stream on Halloween night. It's a Saturday night. And I'm gonna miss what they're streaming about. Ah. Choices, choices, choices. There's our finished broccoli, right? You think we should just season the whole thing? Yes, I am gonna put barbecue seasoning on this broccoli. The mesquite. Eh, I'm just gonna season the whole thing. I don't care. I don't care. I remember years and years ago, this um, this girl asked me if I would uh, if I would you know teach her some stuff about nutrition, 
And we actually went to the grocery store, and I was showing her, you know, kind of what how you shop in the grocery store and how you get ready and do all this stuff. And that was way, way before I got into weightlifting or uh, meal prepping or anything else serious. You know, I was just kind of like into nutrition back then. And I remember her talking about watching out for carrots. She's like, I heard carrots are, I love carrots, but I heard they're real starchy and real high sugar. And I was like, listen, you do what you want, okay? But my opinion slash advice is that carrots, that's not gonna make or break somebody's diet plan. Give me a break, you know? Can you imagine like you're super hungry, you know, you bust up in the refrigerator and you eat like half a bag of baby carrots. You think that's gonna derail your whole diet plan? And no, no, no. Now, we talking about busting up and getting that pint of ice cream, which I have been known to do in my life. That's a different thing. There are no carrots in that ice cream. You not fooling me. This chicken's almost done. I never took the small pieces out. So they are gonna be nice and done. I'm gonna turn my oven off. I'm gonna turn my timer off. We're gonna look at this chicken. We're gonna get this chicken out of here. I love rock and roll. So, I can tell just by, just by looking at these that most of these are done. The big piece, that, I wish my meat thermometer hadn't died because now with the big giant piece, I usually like to like to poke it and test it when they're, look, I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like this big thick piece. I usually like to poke my meat thermometer in there and see if it's actually all the way done. And this, this piece, this piece is a thick boy. Look at that thick boy. But what I will do instead is I will cut into them and I will take a gander and see what it looks like. And then based on that, that is done. That is done. That is done. Hey, it's turning out all right. Yep, so they are done. They're definitely done. Um, what am I doing? So normally, like I say, normally you're gonna wanna let your chicken set, um, what they call resting, and you let the juices kind of, I don't know what they, what they do. The juices are swirling around and they're having a party. Um, but chicken, steak, all that stuff, you're gonna wanna let it rest for like five to 10 minutes. Although, it could be one of those things that the expert chefs tell us to do and there's no real reason for it. That is a possibility. Possible, plausible, yes. But I'm not gonna let, um, I'm gonna go ahead and slice one of these up because I want y'all to see what one meal prepped will basically look like. So I'm gonna take a big scoop of this broccoli Well, I think I am anyway. So we got your broccoli like that, kind of in one half. And I have a, here's our little digital scale. Turn that on. And you can put I could put something on it, like a sheet of aluminum foil to cover it, um, but I'm just gonna put the chicken straight on it um, since it's washed and everything. And then I'll just wash the surface off later. So I'm gonna, I, I like to cut my chicken into sort of cubes, close to cubes, and then I'll put it on the scale and we're, we're looking for eight ounces of chicken. Once you start cutting this and you put it on the scale and you see what eight ounces looks like every time, you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly eight ounces. It can be a little bit under, a little bit over. It's not gonna make that big a difference. 
So that's actually too much. I think that the scale, yeah, this scale needs to be zeroized. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the scale. You are not gonna believe this. Actually, you will believe this. My scale is is freaking out too. <laughs> I don't know why. What is going on today? What is going on today? My music stopped. This is a little unsettling. All right, I'll try it one more time. Zero it out. It's totally freaking out. It's totally freaking out and not working. That's okay. I'll treat myself to a new digital scale. Okay, well, I'll tell you this. Since I have had a lot of experience meal prepping, I will cut the amount that usually is about eight ounces and I'll put it in there and I'll show you. <laughs> um, I guess another way to do it is, remember the sweet potato that I showed you? That's about eight ounces in that sweet potato. So you're just looking for about the equivalent amount of chicken that this would be. So I'm just gonna throw this in here like this. We'll just put these two. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. So that's it, look at that. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, oh wait, I am going to do one thing. Oh, let me see. Give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. <laughs> I'm going to do one, one fancy thing for these meals. So I bought these limes. Oh man. So I bought these limes and we're gonna cut them lengthwise, right? And then lengthwise again. So we're basically quartering them. We're basically cutting them into fourths. Like so, like so. And then I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna put the lime like on top of the broccoli like that. And, um, so that's it. That's like, that's gonna be my lunch and dinner for most of the week, probably until about Friday, Saturday, and then I'll decide what to do from there. So I package it up like that. I bring the potato with it like that. I'll microwave this. I'll eat half of it with this, with lunch, and then half of it with dinner, which is gonna be the same thing. So that's it, y'all. That's basic, basic meal prep and some ideas, some mindset tips to get you started in fitness if that's what you think you want to do or where you want to go with your life. And uh, until next time, you know what I always say, if you're feeling small, I love your shadow. I'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. to make some Spam Musubi and tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. to do mimosas and going through the magazine and having a little gossipy brunch, all right? Y'all have a good one. Have a great, great, great rest of your weekend.